Hello, welcome to the Citrus Garden. If you're new here, my name is Christina. If you're not new here, hi, welcome back. It's great to see you. This is a general collective reading. Um, there are no signs attached to this, so only take it if it resonates with you within the first couple of minutes. Otherwise, go find a different video. And again, you can also just take components of the video. Not all of the messages within the video can will um, be for you. So just you can take parts of it, leave others. Totally up to you for you to use your discernment on that. Um, so I've been getting a couple of downloads recently about um, shadow work. So I feel like uh, if you are doing shadow work or I want to use a different phrase for that because I feel like just within the spiritual community, there's so much, uh, perhaps like misinformation about what shadow work is or what, um, what it means when somebody is in their shadow or, um, acting from a place of their shadow if we want to phrase it like that. Um, so anyways, what, what I was getting, and I feel like most people know this already, um, the shadow is formed when there's hurt or pain, right? So it is a protective mechanism, the shadow. Um, it's something that sort of an aspect of ourselves that sort of comes online when we're dealing with difficult energies or quote unquote, low vibrational energies. Um, so it is a protective energy. Uh, and as someone who is spiritual or, or conscious or whatever word you want to use there, you can never um, get rid of your shadow, right? It's a part of you always. Um, however, the more you sort of explore spirituality and consciousness, you can better accept um, and integrate that aspect of yourself um, in a way that will benefit you and others as well, right? Especially if you're like, I've been seeing this a lot too. If some, if you're dealing with someone who is in their shadow, it's almost like you also have to be aware of your shadow and how that will interact with their energy, if that makes sense, because if you're, if someone, someone that you're dealing with is in their shadow, um, <laughs> oftentimes when you try and like, um, interact with them in a way where it's like loving and light and all of that, it, it just does not end well. It causes separation. It causes all that. So it's kind of like if there's somebody that you care about that's in their shadow, it's like you also have to meet them in that energy. You don't have to, of course. That's always up to you. That's your choice. How you choose to engage with whatever energies around you is your choice. Um, but if it is like a relationship or whatever, somebody that you're dealing with that you care about is... Um, struggling with something, right? Perhaps they're, um, because it, just an energy of like, again, the shadow is protective, it's self-protective. So um, perhaps there's, if there is somebody who's in their shadow, maybe they're feeling unsafe about something, um, whatever that is. And so, uh, being compassionate is just like the, the, the best sort of guidance that I can give in that case is like being compassionate about like if somebody's feeling unsafe about whatever the situation is, it's like being in a, in a vibration of being safe or being, um, a place of refuge perhaps. Anyways, that is just what's coming through. Um, there's all this other energy as well about, um, a flame. If you, if you think about like a candle, right? If you, if you light a candle and then, and then you hold up the candle to a light, the flame 
does not cast a shadow. Um, the candle itself will cast a shadow, but the, the flame doesn't. Because the flame is energy, it's not matter yet. Um, and if you blow that flame out, the smoke will actually cast a shadow. I don't know what that is, what message is coming through with that. Um, I feel like it just has to do with something about like um, physical matter or like if we want to just talk about earth as an element, cast a shadow. So if you have a physical body, um, you have a shadow that is just like that's just it just that's just how it works. That's just one of the the laws of um, this plane that we're in. Um, anyways, I don't know if that's a specific message for someone. And finally, one more thing is that um, in the darkness, quote unquote, or in the shadow, what grows in the shadow? And the answer is roots. Um, roots grow in darkness. And also, if you just think about plants, right? Like plants of course, need the sun to grow. But during the day, in the daylight, they're actually not doing much. It's kind of like um, they just absorb all of the nutrients that they need. It's actually at nighttime when the plants actually take the nutrients in order to create and grow. So I feel like there's actually, um, if anyone's doing shadow work, <laughs> which I have been personally, which is why this is coming through, um, is that you need the darkness in order to grow. Um, you need the quiet, you need the rest, you need sort of like withdrawing from um, sun energies, metaphorically, in order to grow. That's where the roots come in, that's where the foundation comes in. Um, that's where all the structure and the stability happens. That's sort of what's coming through. And so shadow work is not anything to be, um, avoided is how it's coming through. Like you need to do shadow work. It's, it's necessary in order to grow. Anyways, that's just my little rant for <laughs> the beginning of this message. Um, and so the, the, the overall theme of this reading, um, that's my dog <laughs> at the door. The overall theme of this reading is how can you incorporate more shadow actually, which is, which is interesting. It's adding a dimension. So give me one second. I'm just gonna let my dog into the room one sec. Okay. We're back. Um, I'm gonna pull the cards on camera for this message. I have no idea what's gonna come through. That was just sort of like a rant or <laughs> I don't wanna call it, it's not a rant. It was just, it was a download that I was receiving. Um, anyways, so overall message. <laughs> okay, we have the union card, conjunction and resin which is interesting. Um, and then the fog at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so this, this union card is really interesting. Conjunction, because it's light and shadow, right? You need both, is just how it's coming through. Um, it talks about opposites as well. So it's kind of, it's kind of feeling like Sorry, I was, cause I was seeing this, um, I was seeing this image of like somebody trying to create some sort of artwork. Um, and what was missing was the shadow, meaning that there was no, uh, dimension to it. Not that there was no dimension, but there was a missing dimension, right? It's like turning something that's 2D into 3D. It adds a dimension. Anyway, that's sort of what's coming through here. Um, but also, like, you need the opposite energy in order to um, make something real is kind of how it's coming through. 
with this resin card, this one talks about um, a bond or something that holds, right? It's an energy of holding. I'm seeing kind of like a gong in this energy, especially with all the all the energies around it, like Okay, so we're seeing like um, like these ripples, right? Like a ripple effect from perhaps a very significant event, um, but that it has also something to do with like, because the resin is a very physical thing, right? It, it's, um, it talks about the environment as well. There's an energy here of like, sometimes this card comes through as being like, um, The environment determines whatever is within it, right? Like something about, I'm not, I'm not describing this properly, but it's um, kind of like, um, there's this metaphor that I read in one of the symbol books before, like, anyways, it talks about like a fish and the ocean, right? The fish lives within the ocean, that's in its environment. So in order to understand the ocean, you can look at the fish. So the object within the environment describes the environment and vice versa. In order to understand the fish, you must understand the environment that it's within, like why it has scales, why it moves in a particular way, that kind of thing. So it could be something like that, where it, like, if this is you, it's like, or sp somebody that you're seeing, perhaps, um, that there's some, okay, there's something about like, there's, let's say this is a person just for simplicity. Um, something about this person is a reflection of the environment that they're in, right? It's like a, f a fish has scales because it needs to swim through the ocean. So it's telling you something about the environment. This card also has something to do with um, transparency as well, like seeing through something. I actually feel like there's some sort of like, um, almost like uh, perhaps like a veil or like a screen that's being uh, removed or, or unveiled in some way. Cause now I'm seeing almost like a, like, a tarp or covering that's being removed from something. So resin is a miraculous material. It offers both stability and transparency. For centuries, sculptors and archivists have used it to capture an object in time and place, preserving it for observation and adoration. Envision a delicate insect or flower suspended in a paperweight, such as the alchemical resin, alchemical energy of resin. Its qualities are protective, sealing, and hardening. When this card appears, there is a holding that's occurring either literally or psychically. Whether well-intended, someone may be limiting the one they wish to protect. There may be an aspect of nostalgia at work in the laboratory, an unwillingness to let go or change. On the other hand, the resin card can indicate preservation of that which is most valued, a return to what's been lost. Okay, so it's it's interesting because before this reading, I was getting sort of this energy of ash, which in this in this deck, ash represents sort of memories, right? Like the past. Um, and I feel like there's something here about like with the resin, something from the past is being preserved that is not being, that is, something from the past is being preserved. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, instead of it turning to, to ash is kind of how that's coming through. So um, 
I'm just gonna leave it like that. We'll see what else wants to come out for that. The conjunction card is, is generally like a very positive energy, right? It talks about love and union. So maybe something that has been lost is being returned as well because this card talks about especially because it's coming out the energy of the gong, like something exciting or like some sort of significant event or like the beginning of something. Okay, now I want to use the tea leaves one sec. Okay. Hmm. Something that was lost. Um, I'm actually kind of getting like an, an aspect of self as well that has been lost. I feel like maybe, maybe an aspect of self that has been in shadow is being returned. Perhaps from like a previous um, aspect or a previous time in your life, maybe, or like... Um, <laughs> The firecracker excitement. That's what I'm saying. There's some sort of exciting event. And the crown. Honor and respect will come to you. Like a crowning event. Chair empty. Someone is leaving your life. Hmm. Parting of the ways in either romance or business, the broken ring. Because now, well, okay, so now it's looking to me like um, the resin card is looking to me like a bond or uh, a ring that hasn't let go is kind of how it's coming through like perhaps something from the past right because it was talking about like um a, a like a treasured memory or something like that in this case it doesn't necessarily f well maybe it could be treasured but it feels kind of like as i was saying with the ash like this thing from the past has not yet turned into ash is how it's coming through it's um holding on so i feel like there's something that is like has to go through some sort of like parting of the ways because this is looking to me like a separation of something right like perhaps you from an environment or whatever that is in order to be in this sort of like union energy with something else, which is coming through with excitement and the crown. I feel like with the fog at the bottom of the deck that there's still some things that are unclear about the situation or that there's like, again, something that's like a veil or it hasn't been unveiled yet. Climbing towards success. And at the bottom of the deck, a distant friend is thinking of you and good news underneath that. So I feel like there's something where um, perhaps something from the past is like finally releasing is how it's coming through. And you're climbing towards some sort of success or towards some sort of union. This crown 
energy is also coming through with like the crown chakra. Um, releasing something through the, the crown chakra or um, I was guided to use this deck and as soon as I picked it up, I just got really tired. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pull an overall card from the Citadel deck. This one has um, reversals in it though, which I feel like is intentional. the overall energy of this reading. Okay, actually what's what's this broken ring chair empty? Something is leaving your life. It actually looks to me like you may be leaving some sort of environment with the chair, like um in order to climb towards some sort of success energy, whatever that is for you. Okay, so you have here the twins upright. This is self-protection and dual natures, which again is all of the sort of energy of like light and shadow, right? The dual natures. And again, as I was saying with the shadow, it's um it's a it's a protective mechanism. So maybe you are protecting yourself um from something. Or that there's an aspect of yourself that's trying to protect you from something. The resin is also protective, right? Because it, it protects something that's within. You have the astronomer coming out next, discovery and augury and the assassin in reverse, which says ruthlessness and conviction. Okay, so I feel like this assassin energy is something that's um, outside of you just because it's coming out in reverse. So maybe you're trying to protect yourself from some sort of energy um, that is outside of you, that is coming through as sort of like, um, I don't think ruthlessness is the right word, but it's kind of like um, at all costs. It's kind of like it's like a it's like a dog with a bone, right? They cannot release something, or it's like they have to see something through at all costs. Is how it's feeling to me. So it could be that they're like not letting something go, or not letting you go in whatever way that is or whatever it is. Um, you have here the hunter at the bottom of the deck. It, it does kind of feel like there's something like holding on to you So it could be something from the past that's holding on to you. And um, perhaps someone is protecting themselves or protecting something um, in order for this past energy not to be brought into a future thing, if that makes sense. 
because I'm seeing it like this with this astronom astronomer card in, in the middle as being sort of like the shadow or the darkness, right? That there's um, like creating a foundation within the darkness Like it's under the surface, if that makes sense, or it's like not detectable, right? Like you can't see the roots growing, but they are, is how it's going through. You, you can't see the roots growing, but it's like, the, it's because it's protected from something that's on the, on the surface, right? Like something that's immediately in the environment. I feel like that energy is ending though, right? Like it's like, it's leaving your life. You're parting ways with it. Um, it could even be just like somebody from the past who, I don't know if this is like an ex or something who's just like, um, perhaps just like energetically tied to you still. It's kind, of, it's kind of like, um, there's this, uh, hosier song called unknown. Um, and it talks about sort of a, a relationship that's ended. And he talks about like, um, like a feeling of something getting stuck in your teeth, right? It's like, there's, there's kind of like a piece of the past that's like stuck in your tooth metaphorically it's kind of like you can still feel it even though um it's done it's over it's that kind of thing but it's like there's like a little piece like a a piece of the brokenness that's stuck somewhere in your energy and it's kind of like releasing that Because now I'm seeing all these like broken bone pieces, right? It's like they're Okay Um Hmm The hanged man in the tower in reverse. That's certainly a way to start off a reading. Um, which is interesting. Like if you just look at these two figures, because the tower came out in reverse, the hangman is upright, which looks like the tower in reverse. Which is so interesting because I'm seeing this as being like the same environment. It's like, okay, so maybe you're recovering from some sort of tower because I'm feeling this energy as being a past energy. This is the broken ring energy. This is the thing that sort of like um, the assassin in reverse, which is kind of like an energy of like I don't know what this is. I, I don't want to like put words onto it even because it, it I feel like that's going to be very specific to each person, whatever this is, but it's like perhaps some sort of disruptive event, whatever that is very generally a disruptive event from your past. I don't know how past this is for you that is absolutely over, but it's kind of like you're still cleaning up the broken pieces from that is how it's coming through. Like, um, there's still a, a piece of whatever, like broken bone in your teeth, metaphorically. Um, but it's kind of like, so it's what I'm seeing here is that there's perhaps been some sort of um, pause energy with the hanged man 
while you're cleaning up is kind of how it's coming through or like sorting out the mess or recovering from whatever that is and it's almost like almost everything has been restored to its original state before whatever this tower energy was happened right like you're almost back to the original state if you want to call it like that um but there's like still one piece right it's like this still needs to be flipped the other way um I'm kind. I'm kind of getting this energy as being like. Um, I'm getting an energy of like renovation, <laughs> like, like imagine you inherited a house, for example, or you bought a house or whatever, and you're doing renovations and you discovered something like really unpleasant about something in the house that was like hidden, right? Like there was some. So maybe there's something like that, like. That's part of the um, disruptive energy. But I feel like that's cl it's cleared. It's clearing. <laughs> Still stuck in your teeth. Someone can't like stop talking about you maybe. It's like, it's like, the, it's like, um, maybe somebody who just like keeps bringing up the past or bringing up your name or your energy from the past that you just can't let it go is how it's coming through. The Knight of Quills. This is the King of Swords in this deck. Hmm. Someone with regrets. This card talks about a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, it's a lot more than that, but that's just how I'm going to leave it generally. They did not take the warning is how it's coming through. They didn't, um, they couldn't let something go is how it's coming through and perhaps are now feeling, uh, the consequences of that in some way. This is a, this is, this is why I don't like using this deck. Um, it's, um, I feel like that, so it's kind of coming through. Let, so let's talk about the tower. Why, tower energies happen um it's when we ignore our intuition right so it could be that there is somebody in your life perhaps from the past um about like uh perhaps you tried to warn them about something or you told them something it doesn't have to be a warning or it's like they asked for advice you gave it they didn't listen is how it's coming through they didn't listen. They, um, with the King of Swords, uh, I feel like in trying to avoid some sort of outcome, they actually made it manifest faster is how it's coming through. They tried to avoid some sort of outcome to something, right? It's like um, you you perhaps told somebody about a problem and they ignored the advice or they um, dismissed it is how it's coming through. And now it's like it's uh, manifesting.
Hmm. So you have the Six of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. So the Six of Pentacles to me is talking about like um, some sort of balance is being restored. Is how that's coming through to me. Is this the, is this the Miserable story? I feel like it's um and the Queen of Pentacles. second I'm just gonna close the window okay so I pulled out the cards you have um, ace of pentacles at the bottom of the deck so I, I feel like this is talking about like a new beginning or because um, she's stepping through a door a new beginning or like perhaps even a new environment because we were talking about that uh, at the beginning where it's like um, Perhaps there is some sort of like an environment was holding on to you in some way or um, something like that. With the Six of Pentacles, I'm actually seeing this as being sort of like a, this. Is, there's a protective energy here. Um, because this is the, this is uh, the... <laughs> I think this is the Miserable story, which is about, um, like, I'm kind of getting this energy of, like, um, like a patronship or, like, generosity in that way, or, like, some sort of, like, well, there, there's a difference between justice and law. Right? There's something here about that. Because it's almost like um, in that story, there's that uh, the police officer, Javert, who like is definitely the sort of assassin energy where it like will not let something go no matter how past it is, no matter how like small it is as well, like relatively, it's like um, Jean Valjean is not who he says he is, that kind of thing. And so we'll like track him down throughout decades um, to try and uncover something about him. But it's almost like I'm actually feeling like that. So maybe there's been somebody who's been like trying to, and again, there's a red flag there. There's a red flag. I feel like somebody ignored, um, somebody ignored a red flag about somebody else or or hold on maybe it's not that um because the queen of pentacles is coming up next they thought it was a red flag is how it's coming through um but i feel like it's more it's it's like uh it's almost like somebody tried to like discredit someone. Hmm. But it's like this one, this one sort of like um, pristine is how it's coming. Like the with the dress, right? It's like there, there's a. Uh, They're coming out clean, is how it's going through. Interesting. So maybe someone was doing that to you. Uh, that, okay, so that song is, is just, um... Because it talks about, like, um, that song Unknown by Hosier. It's like, 
I didn't see the red flags basically was what that what that song talks about um because somebody was so um the way they spoke was very loving or something like that but it's coming out with pentacles so it's kind of it's kind of like their uh resources But I'm seeing these scrolls, so it's kind of coming through as like their wisdom, right? So maybe there's some sort of like this queen of pentacles might be somebody who is, um, has a lot of wisdom or experience in some aspect. I feel like maybe there is somebody who is not trusting that or, uh, There's an energy of the past here that's sort of um, shaping the perception of this is how it's coming through. Some, because it's kind of like with these two cards, with these two cards, something from the past is affecting this one's point of view. So it's kind of like they can't, perhaps are not seeing um, the... with this sort of like, it's, I don't know. It's almost like in the past, there was there was some energy that was like, quote unquote, a red flag or ended in whatever, heartache or like a broken ring energy. And it's almost like that point of view or that disruption is the point of view that somebody is seeing something new right like some some sort of new opportunity or union or excitement or crown or opportunity um but it's like they're still seeing it from this past tower perspective if that makes sense it's like there's still a little piece that's stuck in that person's point of view right they they can't see it from the new perspective quite yet, is how it's feeling to me. It and it feels like it is a self-protective kind of kind of mechanism, right? They're protecting themselves. Okay, the next couple of cards you have is the Knight of Ink, which is the Knight of Wands, and the Eight of Pentacles, which is interesting. Um, because this card is talking about, like, something behind the scenes. I feel like maybe there's somebody who is, like, uh, like worried that there is... Um, Like something unseen, right? That or like something deceitful or something dishon dishonest about what's coming in is how it's coming through. Like because of perhaps the past energy that was that, right? Like the past energy was deceitful or there was lies or something like, especially with this queen of light. This is the um, the Jane Eyre story, if you're familiar with that one. Um, like skeletons in the closet is how it's coming through. So, which is interesting because the next card to come out, like so, so, cause, so there's one person maybe who is fearful of skeletons in the closet. And then this one here with the page of cups is looking to me like over romanticizing something is how it's coming through 
um, when it's like the real thing is in the other direction is how that's feeling to me. Like perhaps getting lost in daydream or fantasy um, while the, <laughs> while the other one sort of like where, like trying to uncover the potential, um, quote unquote, skeletons in the closet. With the Ace of Quills, this is the Ace of Swords. Um, and it's the, Sher the Sherlock Holmes story. With this sort of detective energy, right? Like trying to uncover the truth about something. There's some sort of mystery. And it's coming out with this, the Hounds of Baskerville. I'm, so, um, I'm not, a, I'm not like familiar with that story a hundred percent, but I feel like it has something to do with illusions, right? Like, or like, and again, with the dog far away. I feel like someone's maybe think like, okay, there's, it feels kind of like there's two perspectives. One is um, trying to uncover some sort of like potentially secret energy or like trying to like trying to find the lie or trying to find the thing that's hidden or trying to um, perhaps somebody's being very cynical maybe or just like they still have that sort of like broken piece of glass in their energy or perspective or something like that. Um, it's like looking for the worst in something. And it's like, if you are looking for the worst, you're going to find it. Absolutely. You're going to find it. You, it's kind of like that. If that's the filter that you're um, using to see something, you are absolutely going to find it because that's this, that's sort of the self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're looking for the shadow and the darkness, you're going to find it. <laughs> so it's not saying to do that because the opposite would be if you're only looking at the fantasy, right? This is sort of like the reflecting pool, like over romanticizing something or... Um, like only seeing the light in something. Um, because if something doesn't have a shadow, then it's not real. It's just an illusion. So with the Ace of Swords coming out last, it's kind of like, it's, it's a blend of things, right? You need both the light and shadow. I feel like at the moment though, there's still a bit of fog around the situation. So it's kind of like, you have to wait for the fog to clear. And something interesting about this fog card is that um, the two things that help clear the fog is fire, so inspiration, desire, heat, and also um, time, right? Like waiting for, for the sun to come out um, because that clears the fog, right? The fog only lasts for a couple of hours in the morning and then it, by, by noon, it sort of dissipates. So it's kind of coming through, especially with the hiss. And there's, so, there's something here about like what I was saying at the beginning about um, the flame does not cast a shadow, right? The, the fire itself does not cast a shadow, but once you blow it out, the smoke is, has a shadow. I don't know exactly what that's talking about, but it's... I feel like it's trying to bridge a gap between something that's imagined or like somebody's perhaps um, framework or like how they're thinking about a situation is like they're only, like they're anticipating a negative. They're seeing something from um, a past tower energy, right? That's their perspective. And so it's like having to shift that. 
somebody seeing something from like a past filter it's like they're they're in sort of like this ocean of um the ocean which i don't know what that is the environment that they're in is shaping how it is they're seeing something so it's like in order to understand the fish you must understand the ocean that it's living in it's something like that so it's like you have to get the fish out of the ocean maybe or um i don't know there's something here about like trying to bridge the gap between energy and matter energy and pentacles or resources or f or physical something physical <laughs> okay i'm just gonna pull one animal card i feel like i don't know if that was helpful or not but What's the overall sort of ending message for this? <laughs> the moth. This card talks about um, somebody having the perspective that the grass is greener on the other side, right? Like, um, and you have the peacock at the bottom of the deck. So it could be very whimsical. <laughs> and now it's going through like the moth being drawn to the flame. So maybe somebody's worried that like um, this flame that they're being drawn to is not real. Right? And then it's kind of just like when they get there, the flame's going to be extinguished and you're just left with a shadowy hound. So the moth says impulsive, hasty, wishful. The moth is sure the grass is greener on the other side. Moth energy is at play when we're attracted to easy solutions or anything shiny and new. This can lead to unfinished projects, disappointment or burnout. It's helpful to remind moth personalities that life is complex. No matter the illusion, no one is exempt from the trials and tribulations of this great journey. Practice seeing life as an infinite mystery rather than wishing it was easier or different. So when in balance, it's enthusiastic and whimsical. Um, when out of balance, it idealizes others and jittery. And to bring into balance is to finish a project. So it's kind of coming through as like, um, maybe somebody's being just like drawn to a flame. As, and there may be illusions or over romanticizing happening about what that is. And um, there may be sort of energies of like, uh, having to work through some sort of difficult challenge that is um, not as romantic as it seems since <laughs> kind of that's going through. It's, it's like the practical, right? Like something very practical. I feel like this deck is very um, intense. It doesn't have to be that dark or shadowy it's kind of coming through and again this is um take with a grain of salt i feel like it's talking about there's like something very very practical or like there's um a struggle with some sort of practical step or um thing that needs to happen maybe um but there's perhaps a self-protective energy around this person or whatever it is. It's like protecting themselves, perhaps because of fear that 
whatever this flame is, is um, an illusion or that like it's not real or because it's like, I don't know, is it too good to be true? I say that so much in my readings. Um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> if this reading resonated with you, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It helps so much. Thank you for sharing your energy with me and I hope you have a great day. Bye.